I didn't work with Walter. Uh, I was his friend for a long time. And like everyone that knew Walter, I was always asked, what's he really like? And I would answer, he, he's just the way you hope he is. He was always, I thought, the same guy that uh, most of America uh, guessed he was. He was physically brave, and he wasn't afraid to show his emotions. He was generous, fun-loving, a courtly gentleman, and good company wherever we were. To steal a line from Melville, he was my Harvard and my Yale. I learned to think and appreciate and observe the world the way Walter did. I even learned how to handle my own very, very small celebrity, watching him enjoy with good humor and a smile and patience his slack-jawed admirers. Our happy friendship began years ago. We were hosting a fundraiser at my home down in the Chesapeake Bay. Walter and Betsy were the celebrity couple. It was a rather dull affair, actually. And Mrs. Cronkite seemed content. She was whistling a little ditty to herself, seemingly. Of course, all of us that know uh, Betsy's little whistle and the Uga horn on a nuclear submarine might herald the same concern. Betsy was done fundraising and ready to go down to the old Annapolis waterfront to visit a small 100-year-old saloon that I just happened to own. We had great fun that night and spent the next day on the water for the first day of a lifetime of sailing together. Visits to each other's homes, laughter, and lots of adventures. Walter and I sailed our boats side by side or shared the same deck for the next 35 or so years. We had the best seats in the house for the latest Broadway shows and did New York. And let me tell you, with Cronkite, that was quite a ride. The day would eventually come to an end. Walter stuffed 25 hours into the 24-hour day. And late at night, the call would come up the stairwell in the old brownstone up in Yorkville. Good night, old boy. Good night, Walter. Thanks for a great night. We flew to the country house in the vineyard, watched the sunset. We dined with presidents and explored the Caribbean by sail. The family folded me into their life, and I became a trusted and comfortable member. By the way, sailing with Walter on Winty was not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Walter loved the sea. And when more timid stayed ashore, we left our secure mooring and set sail, usually a lot of sail. Wind, sea conditions, bah. Hoist all sail, pointer seaward, and away we would go. With sturdy windy going full tilt, lee rail under, spray flying port and starboard, the brave crew hanging on for dear life, Walter hunched over the helm, would catch my eye, grin, and over the racket of the wind holler, sensational. <laughs> Standing at the wheel of my beautiful old bald eagle, tucked in close astern his boat, reading over and over, Winty. Edgar Town, painted on her stern. I comfort comfortably, or confidently, I should say, trailed Walter into probably every cove and harbor in Maine and New England uh, as well. Walter knew them all and couldn't wait to share the beauty and perfection of a hidden cove and show them off as well to his Chesapeake friend. 
After setting the anchor in another pine scented cove, rafting our boats together, and after our bodies recovered from the obligatory plunge, uh, plunge in the always frigid main water, the time would come for hot popcorn, a cold beer, while we rehash the day's sail. Then dinner aboard his boat or mine, with decent wine and never-ending fascinating conversation, whoops of laughter. After dinner, a pipe and a brandy on deck. One time, a magnificent aurora borealis flashed across the night sky and seemed to last for hours. We were alert and all struck. Finally, softly, from Winty, well, good night, old boy. That was sensational. Good night, Walter, it sure was. Every fall, Walter would sail to the Chesapeake. This became an annual boys' sail, eventually manned exclusively by ex-military pilots. They were tough, dependable gentlemen and loved to trade stories with the captain. Problem was, there are too many captains. All of us captained our own boats. We were all either Naval Reserve captains, airline captains, or Air Force captains. Captains from stem to stern of old Winty. So we commissioned Walter Commodore, captain of all captains in Nelson's day. And as you'd guess, Walter uh, had no problem adjusting. The rank became commonly used among his friends and family. In fact, when I got the call that Walter lost, Walter lost his final battle, the message was, the Commodore is gone. The Commodore and I sailed through a wild storm on a race to Bermuda. One year, just the two of us on deck while the storm sank the largest boat in the fleet. We shouted our life story to each other while we took turns at the helm. A lifetime friendship bonded that dark and stormy night. Walter was more than a crusty old sailor or iron pants editor, though. He had an antenna sensitive to friends' pain. He knew the words that restored the fun and chased the worry and made things good again. He was the kind of guy who could, openly and without shame, shed tears with a friend when his old yellow lab died. Now my brother, my teacher, my shipmate and pal, it's time for me to say, good night, old boy. It's all been sensational. I love you and miss you so. Fair winds and following seas forever. Rest in peace, my dear old friend.